And what I learned is, I think, profound. For example, when I got to the near the wall in the city of gold around the city in heaven, there was a welcoming committee that was just congregating to get there to meet me. And it looked like they had been assigned to meet me at the exact time that I was arriving. And this group came to meet me and greet me. And I could see by their smiles and I could see by the brilliance in their eyes and what appeared to be exuding love coming from every pore of their being. They loved me. They absolutely loved me unconditionally. And I could feel it and sense it and know it. Yet, not one of these people were a blood relative on earth. Not one of these per people was anyone that I had known personally uh, on earth. And that may uh, frustrate a lot of people because I've had a lot of emails come back and people have been relatively unkind about that. And they said, that's not possible. That's not right. Your story's not true because you're going to meet your family. You're going to meet. Oh, oh, okay, no, wait a minute. Time out. You know, my family is on the inside. I'm going to see them. But listen to what God taught me because maybe there's some value in learning what God taught me here. This, this family was, <laughs> what do you mean they're not my blood family? They're more my blood family than anything else because we have the same blood flowing through our veins. It's the blood of Jesus that binds us together. Even though I didn't know these people, they were my blood family. These were my brothers and my sisters in Christ, and nothing could possibly be more wonderful or more bonding than the blood of Jesus. So, yes, they were my family. They are my family. And I would say this to anybody listening. If you know Jesus as your Savior, if you're on your way to heaven, you're going to love it there for, if no other reason, you are going to be surrounded with the most loving people, your brothers and the sisters, by the millions. They love you unconditionally for who you truly are, not who you want them to think you are, but who you truly are. That was mind-boggling to me. And then when I woke up from the hospital and I sat in my wheelchair and I thought about this event and I sort of meditated on the event, I started realizing the Lord was talking to me, Dale, did you notice any uh, skin color differences between that family that I sent to you? And then I thought, yes, yeah, there would be what we would call uh, white and black and, and Asian. And yes, there, there, there was. Dale, did you notice any gender differences there? Well, yes, I, I, I did. But did you notice it when you were there? Absolutely not. And then silence. And I connected the dots. In the silence, as God's talking to me, and I realized there is no racism in heaven. There's no racism in the body of Christ. There's no room for racism or this gender identity. We are brothers and sisters, and our bond is unbreakable. It's complete. It's thorough. It's fulfilling. Uh, this is what I learned in heaven, is that love is absolutely unconditional, and it's... it's uh, hard to describe because it does not exist on the earth. We might, I go around always hoping for it, looking for it, uh, praying for it again, uh, but uh, it can happen. It, it, it could actually happen. And the best way that it could happen on earth, if I can say, because I've been in little glimpses of that, you take a group of believers and you put them together and isolate them together. And they have one assignment. Your assignment is to do what Jesus told the disciples to do in the upper room. Go and tarry. And when you're basically wait for the Lord, and so you pray and you fast, 
not every meal necessarily, but you do some fasting and you read God's word and you spend whatever time necessary. What, what happens is the walls of pride and ego and selfishness start slowly coming down. The mask start coming off. And what we find here is that the Holy Spirit's love, this unconditional love, gets more and more and more real in our everyday life. And you see, when Jesus told his disciples to go into the upper room, they be, they became in one accord. And when that occurred, the Holy Spirit came and descended on them. We can have that on this earth. We seldom have it. We seldom see it, but it is possible. And I'll tell you, it's it's happened to maybe a half a dozen times, and I I long for it. And I love it. And this is what we as believers can expect. But we need to get rid of ourselves and let God have complete control of us. And then there's that oneness. So that's just one. That's one thing. What did I learn? I learned that there is no racism. I learned that love is unconditional, and and I I learned that there's no sin, and it's kind of weird. We're all of us are in rooms right now, and we're breathing air, and we don't even think about it. We're inhaling, exhaling. We don't think about it. Our minds are on other things. But when I was in heaven, I was trying to put my finger on what in the world is this? Oh my gosh, there's no sin. There's there's no sin. Can you imagine? And, and I'm sure you notice that yourself, but there's no sin, there's no jealousy, there's no pride, there's no selfishness. There's just nothing but the joy of God, the love of God, the life and the light of God that fills all of us and everything in heaven. And that's the way God created it. We can have a glimpse of that here on the earth. And a lot of people say, oh, Dale, can't you, you just can't wait till you get to heaven. I'm sure you're just ready to go right now, aren't you? And on one side, yes, sure, of course, yeah. But, you know, all of us and everybody that are watching, you're already in eternity right now. You're already in eternity because you are a spirit, you are a soul. Those are going to live forever. Now, the only question is, where will you go? But your body will die unless, unless the Lord returns, and he very well may in our lifetime, the three of us, if we live to be a normal life span, we very well may see uh, the return of Jesus. And we can talk about that someday, but uh, this is just the way it is. We have eternal life guaranteed, going to have eternity guaranteed. And so in the meantime, the podcast that you guys are doing, Sean, Randy, you're touching lives. You're reaching people that would never be reached. And every day that you're doing this, every time you've touched someone, you're changing eternity for that person. So keep going, guys. Keep doing the great work that you're doing. And I know for myself, I'm going to just keep doing the same thing on a small scale. I'm not a big name ministry probably never will be, but I love God and I want to have every breath that matter for him. And I want to help people find that Jesus really is the son of God. He really was the Messiah, that the, the promised Messiah was in Jesus. And uh, <laughs> you can trust him. You can trust his word. And uh, to follow him with your life, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Well, I, I think that des definitely deserves an amen. And uh, I have a question I want to ask, but Randy, I want to give you an opportunity to comment. Uh, obviously, uh, Dale was sharing things that probably relate and touch on your stories as well. Anything you want to contrast or comment on with what Dale just shared? We are simpatico, uh, Sean. Um, you know, I've read his story. I know exactly what he means by the eye candy, you know, talking about people want to want to know about the color of the the roads, the stone, the, you know, the majesty of heaven. Uh, but it's all about the Lord. It's consumed uh, by Jesus Christ. 
Um, I, everything that you, you speak about, Dale, I'm like, uh, I'm in a heaven reunion, you know, I'm okay. I'm somebody gets me, you know, coming, going through, gone through this experience because one of the things about your story in particular that has impressed me is you, um, have a humility about you and an impact that is understated. Um, I've got to tell our audience that that Dale's impact in his ministry, and on me personally, is, is profound, gargantuan, uh, thousands upon thousands of people. But what's important, most important to you is glorifying your Lord, and I know that doesn't come naturally. It comes supernaturally through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, so what you experienced in terms of meeting, uh, let's say, strangers in heaven who were of a familial nature in heaven by virtue of the blood of Jesus Christ had the same thing. You know, these were my brothers, my sisters. Um, I had um, a similar salvation experience uh, that you had. My salvation experience was with a uh, boy who had prayed for me. See, this, this is another thing we have. We get emotional when we talk about this. Yeah, how shame, can on not? shame on you, Randy. You, you I know. Know. I said, I'll repent after this, but you know, it's like, <laughs> um, yeah, how can you not? How can you not? Um, you know, you and I have been methodical. I came from the medical side. You came from, you know, the aeronautic side. Both of them require a great deal of science and mathematics. And so we don't uh, naturally come from the bent of talking uh, maybe about the, the ethereal things. Um, and then that profound experience, you know, being, you know, that the fact that there is no distinction of race, of gender, and any of these things that this world just emphasizes ad nauseum, right? <laughs> that we it's, it's, it defines people in this world, and people yeah. want others to be defined by that. In heaven, there's none of that. So all of those things, Sean, were certainly analogous uh, to to my experience, and that's that's I think the, the takeaway that we will uh, understand through uh, through this interview with Dale and others is that, you know, if, if, if there's so many commonalities that we have, especially those of who, us who knew Christ going into this experience, um, that there's something to this. And we're kind of in a way, Dale, you're speaking to us prophetically. You know, this is what you, I'm speaking to you, the viewer. This is what you have to expect. This is your future. Do not fear death. Do not fear dying. Heaven is in your future. I love what you said, Dale, that eternity is now. We're living in eternity. And that, that is uh, that's, that's so special uh, and that you highlighted that fact. There's a, there's a lot of people that's, that have said, uh, and, and, and well, first of all, amen, Randy, amen to what you said. Praise the Lord for what you said and how you said it. There's a, a lot of people that have said, well, I just, I'm, I'm too old or I'm too sick or I'm too, um, I'm too poor. I've been beat up so much. I've been abused. I've been on drugs. You know, they have every excuse in the world. And they said, there's nothing I can do. Nothing I can do here on this earth. And I, I keep thinking about how important the prayer life that Jesus had when he was on earth how he would go away and be alone when the disciples were sleeping and he would spend time. This is a son of God. This is a guy with the Holy Spirit in him, but he's on the earth now. He's in this fleshly body, but he's spending so much time with God in order to still have that oneness with God and to be able to have the power of God in his life. And so I say, uh, you know, people that say, well, I can't do anything. I, there's nothing that I can do. Well, there was one that was paralyzed. And of course, we prayed for paralysis to be, you know, defeated. And that's a tough one. We, we, we've known that that's one of the more tough, tough things to do. But this person finally understood that they could do something, even paralyzed. They could pray. They could spend their living days, every day they could pray. And you know, that is a purpose for a lot of you watching right now. 
that say, well, I, you know, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a this or that. I'm not a, a successful business person, whatever. But can you pray? Can you pray maybe a half an hour a day or an hour a day? If you pray an hour a day, you will change your world if you'll spend an hour a day in prayer. And that's something to challenge everybody with. Find, find what God would have you do. Some have many talents. Some have uh, untapped reservoir of talents and gifts. Turn those over to God. You want to have happiness and joy? There's nothing greater than taking what God's given you and giving it away. You know, love is something you can't keep, something that must be given away. And when you give it away, you get it replenished uh, on steroids. You just get more of it. So take what God has given you, give it away, and you'll find more joy, more peace, more, more purpose. And that's what this living life is, I think, about. <laughs>